Welcome to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, a real estate investment program. Listen and learn how to use real estate to build wealth and passive income streams for you and your family. We bring you experts every day to discuss and answer your questions on everything from single family homes all the way up to 600 plus unit apartment complexes. And now, the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome to the show. My name is Al Gordon, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. Well, we're working on your financial freedom, but Congress, well, they have other plans for you. They do. They have other plans for you. Don't you know how this this big picture thing works? Don't you understand that there are people in Congress that believe that you work for them? that you work on their behalf, that you are their subjects. Yeah. I I mean, I'll be honest with you. I I thought a couple hundred years ago when we uh, told the King of England, uh, we're done, we're out of here, we're no longer your subjects, and we're willing to go to war for that, to gain independence from you. I really thought that back then we gave up that, that whole subject thing. But as I read the news today, I realized that, that still exists in this country. I think it does. You see, here's what was going on over the weekend. Well, this actually happened prior to the weekend because, you know, Congress, for the most part, does not work on the weekends. Yeah, Congress does not want to be bothered by the business of the people on the weekends because they have more important things to do. But here's what, what those people put together and released on us. Now, it hasn't been fully released on us yet. I have to be fair. I do have to be fair. Just because Congress, and and in this case, I'm talking about the House of Representatives. Just because the House of Representatives puts together a bill, that doesn't necessarily make it law. It, It doesn't. It still has to go to the Senate, and the Senate has to look at it, And the Senate has to determine whether or not they agree with the information that was in the bill that came out from the House. As a matter of fact, the Senate has the ability to introduce its own bill, which has to go to the House of Representatives to be reviewed. I mean, that's that's the way it works. So sometimes both chambers of Congress will be working on the same thing from a different perspective. And then eventually they get all this stuff into committee and, and, and they iron it all out. And then once, once that bill is finalized, once the House of Representatives says, yes, we're good with it, once the Senate says, yes, we're good with it, it goes to the White House to be reviewed and either signed into law or rejected and sent back to Congress. That's, that's how laws are made in this nation. That's also how taxation occurs In this nation, and that's exactly what the House of Representatives has been up to. According to CNBC, the top earnings, I should say it differently because it's not the top earnings, it's actually the people who earn the top earnings, the people that actually go to work and earn an income. Those people could face some seriously, ridiculously higher taxes in the very near future. CNBC says that top earning New Yorkers could face a 61.2% combined tax rate under this current house plan. And out out there in California, you're probably going, it's not us. It's not us. It's New York this time. Yeah. Your number's not so good either. Yeah. You might be looking at a 59% tax rate. Yeah. 59%. Now in fairness, these tax rates will be applied to the top income earners in our country. And you might be sitting back thinking, well, heck, that's not me. That's not me. I, I, it's not going to bother me. These, these additional taxes are not being targeted at me. They're being targeted at the quote-unquote uber rich, right? Well, here's the problem. I want to be one of those people one day. Yeah. I mean... I have goals. I have objectives. I'm an American. I'm allowed to 
pursue the American dream. And I think that one of the things that you're allowed to pursue in this country is a thing called wealth. And by doing so, by, by pursuing wealth, by, by acquiring assets that make a fundamental difference in your life, you will increase your wealth. Now, this, this tax rate thing, I guess it's, it's really hard to say who really gets tagged by this thing. Because taxes can come at you from a different perspective. It, it can come at you from a, a different approach. And you may think taxes are solely focused on your earned income. In other words, that money you go to work and earn. But there are also taxes applied to your investments. There are taxes applied to what's called the capital gains. In other words, when you make money off of an asset because you correctly invested in that asset and you improved that asset over time, and then you disposed of that asset. I'm not saying you threw the asset away. I'm saying you transacted that asset to to another person or another entity. You're eligible for capital gains taxes. And those are taxed differently than ordinary income. But those taxes do tend to wind up on your 1040 or your 1040A or definitely not your 1040EZ because if you're filling out the EZ form, really all you're doing is is working for a living. You have you have no other financial assets to deal with, and that's why that EZ form exists. You need to be concerned about an increase in taxes. And even if you don't think, even if you don't think, well, that's not gonna that's not gonna impact me. That's not going to be a problem for me because I'm not in that, that tax rate. I'm not there. Well, here's the problem. When the country decides that it's okay to punish, you heard me correctly, I said punish people who have been successful creating the lifestyle that they wanted in their own lives. When they get punished financially for doing well, some of those people go, you know what? I'm not going to try as hard. And when they don't try as hard, they don't make investments back into the country. They don't make investments into businesses. They don't make investments in anything. And that could trickle down to you. When we come back from the break, let's get into these taxes. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. It's time to turn up the volume and fine-tune your passive income plan so you can create the lifestyle you've always wanted. Welcome back to the show. Death and taxes, the two things that you cannot avoid in your lifetime. Yeah, you can't can't avoid them. Eventually, you're going to die. That's just the biological reality of what we are is individuals and taxes. Yeah, you're going to pay taxes. Even if you have the best CPA in the world, even if your marginal effective tax rate is 0% because you've got the best CPA in the world, you still pay taxes. You do. You do. When, when you get in your car and you drive down the gas station, you fill it up with gas, you realize you're paying taxes on that gas, Right. You're paying a lot of taxes on that gas. Now, I don't know how it is where where you live, but where I live, they actually put a sticker on the gas pump that tells you, hey, man, this is your tax rate based on the federal level, and this is your tax rate based on the state level. Now, fortunately, I don't live in a locality where they imply an additional local tax. But as I stand there and fill up my car, I can look at that sticker and realize that the money I'm about ready to pay for the gas that I'm dispensing, not all of it is going to the fuel provider. A big chunk of that money is being diverted off to be sent to the taxing authorities, which is code word for the government. Yeah, it's the government. When you go to the store, And you buy things to bring home. Some of those things that you buy at the store 
may be taxed. Some of them may not be taxed, depending on where you live and how they approach taxes. Now, there are a lot of localities that say, hey, fresh foods, we, we don't need to tax those. Prepared foods, absolutely. We need to tax those. So every time you go to the store and buy something, you may be paying taxes. On many purchases that you make, if not all of the purchases that you make, you get the benefit of looking at a subtotal, and right below that, a little thing called sales tax. So they are imposing a tax on whatever goods and services you just acquired. Taxes are everywhere. They are everywhere. Now, what I find interesting about this CNBC article is that they say that New Yorkers could face a 61.2% combined tax rate under a recent plan the House of Representatives put together. And Californians, they're not too far behind. They could be dealing with a 59% tax rate. So how did CNBC get to these numbers? Well, all they did was they looked at the information that was in the proposal and did some simple math. Under the previous administration, the highest tax rate on the highest earners in this country was 37%. In other words, the federal government taxes people that earn money at the highest levels in this country. They, they tax them 30% of their earnings. So a little more than one-third of whatever they bring in and they earn, they have to carve out and give back to the federal government. This particular proposal, and that's what they're, they're using the, the, the term proposal. I love that. It's a proposal. Well, it's a little more than a proposal from my standpoint. What this proposal seeks to do is to migrate the top marginal income tax rate from 37% back up to 39.6%. Apparently, the United States government went broke when we adjusted that tax rate down several years ago. And now Uncle Sam, he wants his money back. Well, at least the House of Representatives want, want their money back. So they're proposing raising the top marginal tax rate. Now, some of you are thinking, dude, that doesn't affect me. Why do I care? I don't care. If you have that attitude, if you have blinders on, if you don't see what's going on around you, that kind of attitude won't get you anywhere. It won't get you anywhere. If you are trying to get out of the financial situation you're in right now and get into a better financial situation, an increase in your taxes may have a detriment to your ability to achieve the result you're looking for. And at a certain point, those individuals that pay taxes at the top marginal income tax rate, they probably didn't get there overnight. I'm pretty confident they worked really, really hard and maybe trampled on some people along the way to get where they're at. And then when you start diluting the returns that they're earning based on a lifetime worth of work, it can have a negative effect on those individuals. It, it could make them not want to work as hard to even get to the next level because they, they feel like they're being punished. Now, there's an argument that says, hey, dude, if you're making $5 million a year, do you really care? I mean, it's not like you're, you're worried about feeding your kids or having gas to put in the gas tank and things like that. Okay, I understand that argument, but that's a that's a terrible argument. That's a terrible argument. That that just goes to the point of we have to label everybody, we have to classify everybody, and you have to be where you're at and they have to be where they're at. And you have to stay where you're at and you can't go to where they're at. I know, it's weird, huh? But let's let's get oh man, I I'm trying to avoid this tax thing cuz it's really it's 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 making me feel like I got ants crawling all over my body. So you're probably thinking, all right, dude, get to that 46.4% top marginal federal income tax rate that, that the House of Representatives is proposing. How, how do they get to that number? 
Okay, so they're going to start at 37%. They're going to raise the top marginal income tax rate to 39.6%. And then they're going to preserve something called a net investment income tax that extends to certain pass-through entities. Oh, by the way, that tax is an additional 3.8%. Oh, in addition to that, they're also proposing including a 3% surtax on taxpayers that earn $5 million a year or more. So just just they're just making a cut line right there. You make $5 million a year, you get to pay an additional 3% tax. And you know what the really smart guys are going to do? They're going to go, well, if I make $5.1 million per year, I think what I'll do is I'll make sure I only make $4.9 million so I can avoid that tax. Smart people are going to find ways to get around this. So now you got to ask yourself, well, what's the point? Why is Congress doing this? Is America going broke? And are we going to have to bail America out on the backs of the truly wealthy? Well, that's a good question, isn't it? That's a very good question. And when the pundits stand in front of you and they tell you the why, they never tell you the whole answer, do they? All right, when we come back for the break, we're going to get into the nitty-gritty of this stuff. Stick around. with the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. We're here to answer your questions and help you become financially free. Welcome back to the show. All right. There are actually more taxes rolled up in this proposal than CNBC lets you know about. Yeah. I, well, I just read one one article from them. In fairness, it was an article on individual taxes. But that's not where it ends. See, Congress believes they need more of your money. They believe that there's a shortfall of revenue in the United States. And maybe that shortfall of revenue comes from the fact that we've been handing out so much money to people to make them stay at home and not go to work. I don't know. I'll be honest with you, I've, I have not gone to the National Register, nor have I done all the research on the Treasury to, to supply you with an answer for that. I, I just don't know. But any time, any time you make an individual decision to make an investment in anything, even in things that you may classify as investments that I may not classify as investments, things like your personal residence, anytime you make a decision to invest in whatever that is, you take a look at what does it cost? What do I have to do to that investment to get it to where I'm trying to get it to? And what are the returns? What are my rewards for doing all of those things? Businesses do the same thing. They come up with business plans. This, these are the goods or services that we want to provide to our customer base. And they figure out what does it take to establish that business, operate that business, and ultimately to, to make a profit. Because if they don't make a profit, unless, of course, they're a nonprofit, they won't be in business very long. So Congress looks at things differently. Congress legally has the right to impose taxes on the citizenry. It's, it's all legal. It's all in our formation documents as a country. It's in your formation documents in the state that you live in. It's probably in the formation documents of the municipality or the county or both that you live in. But recently... The House of Representatives, you know, the people on the federal side, they made a decision to propose an increase in taxes. They're proposing 
this increase in taxes because they believe they need to earn. I don't know. Earn. They don't really earn anything. It's not like they do anything. But maybe maybe the word raise. Maybe that's a better word. So they want to raise upwards of three point five trillion dollars. And what do they want to spend it on? Well, according to CNBC, an investment in the social safety net, which I don't even know what that is. Well, actually, I've got an idea what that is. And climate policy. Yeah, that's that's what I'm getting out of this article. See, the federal government believes, at least at the House of Representatives level, they believe they need to take your money and repurpose that money into something that they think is beneficial to the greater good. And in their arrogance, I will use that word correctly, arrogance, they believe that if they don't do it, it won't happen, and that you as an individual citizen don't have the wherewithal or the capability to affect what they think is a bigger picture problem. Yeah, so what what are they doing? They want to raise upwards of $3.5 million to fund an investment in the social safety net, which I think is called welfare, and they want to provide for a climate policy. Yeah, so they're, they're thinking that we need more green stuff, whatever that is. Whatever they think green is, that's that's what we're supposed to have. And the way they're going to get there is they're going to raise the marginal tax rates on everybody. Okay, in fairness, Biden said, hey, man, if you make less than $400,000, I'm going to leave you alone. I'm just going to I'm just going to go after the rich people. I'm going to go after the rich people. And that, to me, is terrible thinking. Because people that are classified as the rich people either were born into it or they made their way into it. And I think there are less and less born into it types and more made their way into it types. See, I'm a made my way into it type. I'm, I don't classify myself as a wealthy person, but I do classify myself as somebody that has enough passive income coming in that it meets or exceeds my living expenses. And therefore I get the opportunity to say, I am absolutely real estate retired. I do not have to go out and work to sustain myself. And I have enough income coming in to support my lifestyle. And as our founder, Del Wamsley, says all the time, what gets in the way of a great life is a good life. See, I have a good life right now. I really do. But I want to have a great life. And I don't need the federal government putting more burdens on me to tax me to promote things that, to be honest with you, I don't necessarily agree with. Now, I'm not telling you what your politics need to be. I'm just telling you what I believe. I don't think that's a good investment in our country. I really don't. Now, let's get back to these taxes, because I promised you I would. There are some additional taxes built into this thing. Yeah, I had to go to a different CNBC article to find them. Yeah, it's just just how they write. It's no big deal. They want to increase the top corporate tax rate to 26.5%. See, they want to go after those big, mean, nasty corporations that you might work for and put more of a tax burden on those corporations because clearly you have plenty of money. I mean, isn't that the, the common thought process amongst the populace that every every corporation is just bleeding money well not every corporation is bleeding money no no they're not some of those corporations got into bed with the federal government and they're doing just fine just al's opinion here's the other thing they want to do they want to mess around with the capital gains tax yeah they want to they want to push it up to like 25 percent for everybody yeah for everybody all capital gains, if, if you have the ability to invest, then you must be well off. You must not be rubbing two nickels together, and you must not be worried about where your next meal is going to come from. 
See, I think the federal government, when they when they think that you meet that asset test, you're considered well off, and therefore you uh, you should pay more in taxes. You're not paying your fair share. Bad American, bad American. See, I I, I don't know. I really was not wanting to turn this into like a a political hit show because that's that's not what I do. I mean, normally I'm just here telling you guys about real estate and how it can change your life and how by investing correctly in real estate, you can get this done in five years. And some of you might be thinking, well, the reason this is bothering you, Al, is because maybe some of these things the government's going to do will affect our ability to actually achieve that. And I will tell you this, there, there's a sense of truth in that. There's a sense of truth in that. So if they increase our capital gains rates, is that going to prevent us as real estate investors from retiring ourselves or creating the lifestyle that we want to have? And the short answer is no, no. It's really more of a nuisance tax raise. Yeah, it's, it's, that's kind of the way I look at it. You know, it's, it's, it's big enough that it gets me talking about it, but it's not so big that it's going to destroy everything that I'm doing financially. What it does do, though, is it causes me to rethink some of my exit strategies. Because maybe, maybe a change in the capital gains rate might affect an exit strategy I might have. When we come back, let's talk about it. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Now, let's get back to your map to financial freedom. Welcome back to the show. All right, my head is starting to hurt because at the break, I had to look up the uh, tax code on capital gains taxes, and it reminded me that the tax code is is complex. That's a, that's a clean word. I'll use the word complex. It's complex. It's you no know, wonder why you have to have a CPA to help you navigate through some of the taxation stuff, because if you even bother to read the tax code, yeah, it, it just, I mean, by the time you get to page two, if you make it to page two out of, I don't know how many tens of thousands of pages in the tax code, if you make it to page two, I think you've achieved something. But one of the things the House of Representatives is proposing is they think that you and I need to pay higher capital gains taxes. So what are capital gains taxes? Well, capital gains taxes are taxes that are payable based on an asset that you invested in. So if you if you acquired an asset and you held it for any period of time and then sold the asset, and if you sold the asset for a profit, you're subject to capital gains taxes. So in other words, the federal government has two different tax rates. Well, actually, two different capital gains rates is what I should say. They have two different capital gains rates out there that will impact you depending on the asset and the time that you held the asset. So the the defining point between what are considered short-term capital gains and long-term capital gains is one year. If you hold an asset for a year or less, you are subject to short-term capital gains rates. And, and the current taxing that's it's out there basically says, depending on, now here's where it gets complex, depending on how much you make, yeah, how much you earn, that will dictate how much you pay in capital gains. Yeah, it's I know it's goofy, isn't it? So if, if you look at short-term capital gains rates, they're as low as 10%, and they go up to as, as large as 37%. But the metrics that determine whether or not you're in the 10 or the 12 or the 22 or the 24 or the 32 or the 35 or the 37% tax bracket depends on how much you earn. It's weird, isn't it? When we get to long-term capital gains rates, those are also 
determined based on how much you earn, but also qualify that you held the asset for a year and a day or longer. There are three capital gains rates. The first one is 0%. Yeah, we actually have a 0% capital gains rate. So if you're like single and you made less than $40,400 and you sold an asset, no matter how much capital gains you made on that asset, your capital gains rate is zero. The next rate takes us to 15%. And then the top rate is at 20%. Yeah, most real estate investors are probably in the zero to 15% range. When the Congress, when the House of Representatives thinks that we're not paying enough in capital gains, that maybe we need to be paying 25% across the board. That could be pretty significant. And one of the things that we're able to do as real estate investors is we are able to use the tax code to our advantage. We're able to take depreciation off of our assets, and the, that depreciation, we use that to offset the income that our assets generate for us. I know those of you in California, that's a foreign concept because most of you don't have cash flow. And if you have cash flow, you're probably having negative cash flow. So you're using that depreciation to offset something else. That's not the way we do it. So if I have a, if I have a house producing me $400 a month in passive income, and that house is being depreciated over 27 and a half years. And that depreciation write-off is $400 per month. How much taxes do I pay? Zero. It's zero. Yeah, I pay no taxes. And then if I sell that asset, let's, let's say it's a house that I bought a year and a day ago. And let's say for giggles and grins, I bought it for $100,000. I'm just using numbers that are easy for the math to make my brain not hurt. And let's say I held it for a year and a day, and let's say I sold it for $50,000. Well, my capital gains after cost of sale, and we'll just assume there was no cost of sale. Let's just say I made $50,000 in capital gains. If my capital gains rate is at zero because the majority of my income is offset by other permissible tax permissions. How much capital gains would I pay? Right, zero. So I'd have the whole $50,000 that came off the sale of that property to do with what I want. Now, somebody that's not thinking clearly will go out and buy the beautiful set of jet skis that will look great on the back of their SUV. That's not me. I'm going to take that $50,000 and I'm going to go get me some more real estate. You heard me correctly. I'm going to go buy additional assets that replace the income that I just gave up by selling that asset. And if I can get two for one, I'm doing it the way I'm supposed to. So what's going to happen is now I'm, I'm going to migrate into having two houses that produce $400 a month. That's 800 bucks a month. Oh, by the way, now I have two houses throwing off depreciation that's offsetting the $800, so my tax liability is still at zero. But if I went to the Democrats' proposal in the scenario I just gave you, and even though my tax rate is hardly anything because I'm living off of the income that comes from those real estate investments, and I'm using that depreciation to offset the ordinary tax liability on those gains, on that income stream, if I have to pay a 25% tax, no longer do I have $50,000 to reinvest. Now I have $37,500 to reinvest. That may make it difficult for me to go out and get two more properties. There may not be enough money available to me to do what I need to do. So maybe I don't sell the asset. Maybe now I need to hold the asset longer because I have to take into account capital gains taxes and I have to consider what they will do as far as impacting my strategy to move on to the next property. Is, is that going to damage me? A little bit. It's going to damage me a little bit because now my time horizon to double my assets becomes a little bit longer because now I've got the federal government sticking their hand into my money-making machine and taking money out. Oh, and here's the other thing. When I sell that asset and I buy two replacement assets, I'm creating jobs. You heard me correctly. I'm creating jobs. 
You see, all of a sudden now there's there's three escrow accounts. So there's three title policies being written. There are multiple commissions being earned. There are contractors that are performing services as a part of those transactions that are making money for their businesses. And all of that stuff will stop if I don't transact those properties. And if I wait an additional year to strike, what I've just done is I've just slowed down the economy. I know. I don't run the economy. Al does not run the United States economy. Let's be very clear there, okay? Yeah, and the people that think they run the economy, they don't really run the economy. The economy is what the economy is. But when you learn to operate within the economy, you learn how to make good business decisions. And and the problem that I'm seeing with what the House of Representatives is trying to do is I think they're very short-sighted. I think they're grabbing money now. They want money now to pay for programs that they think are important that I don't necessarily agree with. I don't think that's the appropriate way to be spending our money. As a matter of fact, I think you should leave the money in my pocket because if you do that, I'm going to continue to accelerate my real estate investing machine. And as a result of that, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to fix some of your housing problems because I'm going to go find those lousy properties out there that nobody wants to live into. I am going to go into those properties. I'm going to renovate those properties. I'm going to create jobs because all of a sudden now there is work that needs to be done. I am going to create a beautiful place for somebody to live. And then I'm going to make that property available to a segment of our nation that desperately wants clean, functional workforce housing that they can be proud to call their own. And I would submit to you this. By doing that, I will have a bigger effect on the economy. Yeah, I think I will, because I'm not alone in doing this. I've got 50,000 like-minded members of Lifestyles Unlimited, and that's just the Lifestyles Unlimited community. When we step back and we talk about the whole real estate investment community, if we impact that community, we're going to see some negative effects in this country. And I'm not saying that we're going to do bad things. I'm just saying that the financial domino that occurs because of short-sighted tax policies, man, that's not going to be good. But if you want to find out what I do, go to lifestylesunlimitedworkshop.com. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show constitutes an endorsement, recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.